Okay, let's talk supplies. I'm gonna be using this 48 peg Nifty Knitter adult hat loom. It is the one that's uh, suggested by the designer of the hat. If you don't have this and you wanna make an adult version, you can use something similar to this 41 peg Nifty Knitter loom. There's also the 40 peg. Either one of those will work fine for the adult. If you wanna do a child version, then you need to go to this 36 peg loom. You'll also need some scissors your yarn hook. You're definitely gonna need a crochet hook because this is how we're gonna cast on. And I would suggest, not necessary, but it's gonna make life much easier if you have a stitch counter. We're gonna be knitting clockwise, this way. So here's your anchor peg, and your peg immediately to the left of that peg is gonna be your peg number one. Okay, we're going to be doing the chain cast on. So this cast on is worked from the inside of the peg. So this is where your peg number one is. Get your working yarn and measure out at least 12 inch, a 12 inch tail, more or less. And uh, make yourself a slip knot. Grab the crochet hook and put that slip knot on your crochet hook. Now, if you do your um, chain cast on differently, by all means, do it however it works for you. This is what works for me. Um, this is your working yarn, and this working yarn, you're gonna put between the first and last peg, right there. And you're gonna tighten up your, your, your yarn, but not so much, because you need to come through this, so just a little bit. Here is, here is the tail. And this is your working yarn. And you're gonna go to your next, in between your next peg right here, this is peg one, here's two, you're gonna go in between with your crochet hook and you're gonna get that yarn. You're gonna take that yarn and put it on the head of your crochet hook to grab. And then you're gonna turn that head to the right and pull your yarn through. Gonna do the same thing. You're gonna come over to your next space between those next two pegs. Take your crochet hook, grab your yarn, turn your hook around, and pull that yarn through the loop. And you just continue to do that. This works really fast once you get used to doing it. It goes speedy. So I've gone around the loom and now I'm here on the last peg. And if I was doing my regular cast on for my brim, I would take this loop here and I would put it on this peg. But I'm in this particular uh, design where there is a flap over brim, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and cast this one on and then I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna, as the designer has asked, we need to cast on these six uh, pegs twice. So we have our first row down here at the bottom. And by the way, to keep my tail from bothering me, I wrapped it up and, uh, and I did a little bow here and this keeps it from just being all over the place, okay? So that's what I do to tame this little guy. Now I go here and this was my peg number one and I'm gonna do one chain cast on again. A second row so we're gonna do that for six so here's my first one my second third number four here's number five and now this is my new last one so I take my crochet hook off of that last one and I place that loop on peg number six okay and now your working yarn is on the outside and you're going to turn your loom around and you're ready to start the knitting process. For our first row, we are going to skip this peg number six and we're going to knit, starting with peg number five. And we're gonna do a U-wrap knit stitch, which means we half wrap the stitch, which creates like a U and then just knit over. And just continue to do that. And of course my 
hook can sometimes grab the wrong one. Okay? You wrap, knit over. Okay, so we're back here. I've knitted right up to where that second row starts. And this I've already done, so I want now to knit the bottom row that was cast on. So I need to remove these six uh, loops off these, the, this peg so I can knit the bottom ones. And the way I do this, and if you guys have a better method, by all means, again, do that. This is how I do it, is that I use my knitting tool and my crochet hook. And I take the knitting tool and I pull that loop just a little bit just enough so I can get my crochet hook in right here in between the two pegs and I pull that loop off and I go to the next one and I do the same thing and it goes pretty quick and I just pull those loops off with my hook and this looks like it takes a long time, but it really doesn't. It just seems to be taking longer only because um, it's a little cumbersome. I'm actually like behind the camera trying to do this. If it's on my lap, it's lickety split real fast. Okay, so I have my six loops on my crochet hook. And to rest this so it doesn't bug me, I go back here. Oh, sorry, I got one more to take off. Sorry about that. Let's take that last one off. Okay. So it's off and I put it back here on this last one just so like it holds the crochet hook for me. And now I'm ready to go and knit these last six. Okay, so we're here and this is this is peg number one. And instead of doing what I would normally do, um, you know, which is the, I'm sorry, which is the U wrap like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my working yarn and I'm going to put it behind the peg and bring it to the front and knit over. It's a half stitch and it's usually used for um, when you purl so that you get a nice cleaner look but in this case it's just um, I want to stay consistent this is what I'm going to do when I come here so I wanted to start the same off and it basically puts my working yarn in the direction that I'm going which in this case I'm now going to go clockwise And this is row two, and on row two, we're going to purl. So we put our working yarn under the loop that's on the hook on the peg. Put your hook in that loop, scoop up your yarn, make a new loop, take the old loop off, put the new loop on. Okay, go to the next one. Put your working yarn under the loop that's on the peg. Put your hook in. Grab your yarn. Make a loop. Take the old loop off. Put the new loop on. Pull your yarn. And you just continue to do that. I did the purl stitch on the first few uh, going clockwise and now I'm ready to mount my loops back on the pegs. So I pull out my crochet hook and my um, knitting, my looming hook and I just basically put those loops back on. Okay. The further on you get, well the tighter the loops get because they have to stretch out. So. They might give you, those last, uh, you know, two or three might give you a hard time coming off your crochet hook and onto your loom. 
especially this last one so you might have to help it out a little more than the other ones okay there it is it's back on and I'm going to continue to purl the rest of my um, the rest of my uh, loom until I come back here right okay we're back here where we have two rows of stitches again and we're going to continue to purl and we just have to make sure oh sorry about that we got to make sure that we use only the working yarn to knit and that we don't knit that bottom stitch okay we're going to ignore that row of knitting that's on the bottom and only knit the top loops okay so that was peg number three here's four still using that purl stitch here's five and now for six I'm not gonna purl stitch I'm gonna use a half stitch because that's gonna give me a nice clean edge okay and now I'm heading now back again okay and I'm going to u-wrap okay so repeat what was just done 10 times for a 3 inch for a 3 inch um, a flap over brim and if you want to do the kids then just repeat it seven times and of course please measure as you go along because my yarn can be different from yours the way I knit can be different from yours and or you might be using a different loom so I'm giving you an approximate amount of times that you're gonna repeat these two rows I'm gonna repeat these two rows ten times okay so one row of you wrap knit stitch one row of purl stitch I finished knitting uh, the three inch brim and now I finished with a purl because your last row should be a purl and now I'm ready to um, do my bind off on this section of the brim which is the flap over and for that I'm going to go ahead and uh, knit knit six sorry I'm going to knit peg six and I'm going to knit five. I'm going to take five off the loop off peg five. I'm going to put it on peg six. I'm going to knit off and take that loop and I'm going to put it on peg number five. Okay, and tighten it so it's nice and neat and then I'm going to come here to peg number four and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to knit peg number four take the loop off that peg and put it on the peg next to it which is peg number five I'm going to knit off and take that loop and put it on four. Okay, this is my peg number one, and this is the last one that I will be binding off on so I come here to this peg and I knit off take the loop off that one and put it on peg number one I knit off and take peg number one which is the last one I'm going to be binding off on and 
put it on this peg. And that's it. That is your flap, which you're done with now. You've done your bind off, and now we're ready to knit the hat. Done with the brim, ready to go on to the hat. The process now for knitting um, the knit stitch is going to change in that you're no longer doing the U-wrap knit. The rest of the pattern calls for three rows of knitting and two rows of purl, but in this case your knit stitch now turns into an E-wrap knit stitch, also called uh, a twisted stockinette. So you're going to take your working yarn, which is here, and you're going to completely wrap your pegs. So go completely around the loom, wrapping all of the pegs, like this. You're back here where this used to be your peg number one for your flap, but now you're knitting in the round, so you're going to continue and you're going to make sure all of your pegs have uh, have been wrapped. So you have your loops on the bottom and a loop on the top. And now all you need to do is knit off. Okay. And you're going to do three rows exactly like this. You're going to wrap all of your pegs and then knit off. So here's my first of three knit stitch rows. I did my three rows of knit stitch and now just as the pattern um, calls for, I'm going to do two rows of the purl stitch. And remember with the purl stitch, you're just putting your yarn under the loop that's on the peg, scoop up the yarn, make a new loop, Take the old one off, put a new one on. And I'm just going to continue around the whole loom and finish two rows of purl. I finished my five sets of the knit three rows, purl two rows of the that part of the hat pattern. And now I'm ready to move on to the crown. And the pattern calls for a double rib stitch. And that means that you're going to knit two pegs, purl two pegs, knit, knit two pegs, purl two pegs. So again, we're still using the e-wrap knit stitch which means you wrap your two pegs completely you knit off and then you come over to the next two and you're going to purl okay so you're going to go completely around knit two pegs purl two pegs knit two pegs purl two pegs and you're going to do that for six rows I finished the six rows of the rib stitch and now I'm going to move forward with the cast off. This cast off is the um, drawstring cast off by Jeannie Phillips. Normally um, in hers it calls for three rows of the uh, drawstring cast off but the pattern that we're doing calls for six. So that's completed and now I'm going to take my working yarn and I'm going to go around my loom a little over two times. You usually don't need more than that. If you feel a little uh, more comfortable by doing three, then you can go ahead and go around the loom three times and you can cut your working yarn. We're gonna take that working yarn and bring it behind the knit stitch pegs 
and then we're going to feed it through the pegs where we did the purl stitches. And it's a long bit of rope that you have to feed through, but it starts to get shorter as you work through the loom. Okay? Again, you're going to take it behind the pegs with the knit stitches and you're going to feed it through the pegs where you did your purl stitch. Sorry, I just tapped the camera. And just keep going around. Okay, we're back at the front of the loom. Now we're going to take all of those uh, pegs that had the purl stitches and that we worked the yarn through it. We're going to take those loops off the pegs. Okay, so here we are and now we only have the knit stitches still left on the loom and the purls have been pulled off. Take this opportunity to pull your yarn just a little tight, not too tight, just a little bit tighter. Okay, that's going to help get your, those purl stitches out of the way. And now we're going to do the knit stitch purls. We're going to, I'm sorry, the knit stitches that are on the loom. We're going to feed that working yarn through them. And then take the working yarn and just like we did with the pegs that had the knit stitch, now we're going to take that working yarn and put it behind those empty pegs and come back and feed it through the knit stitches. And take the working yarn and put it behind those empty pegs. Now we're back at this first peg right here and we're just going to take them and we're going to feed them through one more time through these first two pegs where we did um, knit stitches. Okay, so this these two pegs we have fed that working yarn through twice and now we're going to remove those stitches. Okay, so you move, moved your hat off of the loom, and now this particular method of closing your hat can be a little tricky. So turn your hat inside out, and you're going to need to pull this, but I recommend that you pull the string a little bit at a time. And be careful right here. You see where it turns? If you're not careful, you create a knot and that makes closing this very difficult. So don't just take the string and pull it, you know, like you normally would in another um, type of cast off. You need to do this one slowly. See, I'm doing the inside first, and then take this string, which can get a little tricky, and just go ahead and start tightening that up a little bit at a time. 
First the outside, then a little bit of the inside, then a little bit of the outside, and a little bit of the inside. And you're going to see that this cast off will go much better if you do it this way than if you just pull on the string. It's not a good idea and you will have a hard time with this. So little by little with lots of patience pulling that outside circle first and then going back and pulling the inside string a little more until everything closes. I'm hoping you can see how I'm doing this. Okay, see that's the inside. This one's the outside. For some, you know, the way that this cast off is designed, there are like two sections of it. Very odd, but that's what gives you that nice flat looking cast off as opposed to a really bulky one. All right, keep working on that and we're gonna close this hat. Okay, when you're done pulling, your hat should look like this on the opposite side. And you actually will end up with one long string and two strands together, okay? It just can't be avoided. So take your strings and make a knot. Okay, and I love the way this looks, whether it's on this side or the other. It's just such a pretty um, crown on your hat. All right, take some scissors and just cut off that excess yarn. All right, and turn your hat around. And now we're ready to work on finishing off your flap. And you have this um, long tail that you're going to set free. And you're going to get your yarn. And you're going to thread your, your thread, your yarn through your yarn needle. And then we're going to sew this now. This is the flap that had the extra cast on. This is what we're going to put on the top. Um, I kind of dropped some stitches, so mine has a couple of boo-boos. Just ignore it. Um, I'm going to put my buttons there anyway. Okay? If you want to do yours different and you want to do it this way, which gives you like a straight edge um, look, on that flap over that's also an option but if you're gonna do this way then go ahead and turn it around and we're going to now sew this on all right Okay, so this is my last one right here, and I'm going to go ahead and on that last loop, I'm going to feed my yarn through so I can make a knot. Okay, and I'm done 
seaming uh, the flap over. My next step after um, I have seamed my um, flap on the reverse side, I now turn it around and here is that flap over and I'm going to decorate mine with two buttons. You can use one big one, four little ones, three in a row, whatever's going to work for you. This is what's going to work for me and I am going to attach them using a, a regular metal needle and um, some thread that I have put into uh, four strands. You can also use embroidery floss or whatever works for you. Uh, this is really going to be determined by the size of the little holes in your button. So let's put that together. Okay, so here's my slouchy hat in two colors. Here's in um, in a chocolate brown and in this, um, I want to call it like a mustard yellow. And uh, I'm really happy with my hat. I did want to give you a couple of suggestions. I, I wanted to be true to Joanna's pattern. And so we followed it exactly uh, according to the instructions that she gave us. The only thing that I did add to the pattern is the number of rows for this brim because it's not on uh, the pattern itself. So I wanted to help you get as close to this three inch brim as I possibly could. Uh, another thing that I wanted you to make note of is that when you see this hat on the styrofoam head, it has a more slouchier look than it does when you put it on an actual person. So if you want that look that you see on the styrofoam head, go ahead and add another set of this little ripple part right here where you're doing your three knits and your two pearls. If you do another set of these, you will have that more slouchier look than if you follow the pattern exactly. Um, also, you might find that you see kind of like a seam going on right here. Um, you can get rid of this by just blocking the hat. If, um, if you don't know how to block um, your knitted items, I'll give you a link at the bottom of the description. So just go look there and uh, and I'll give you a link to a YouTube video or um, something else that will show you what I mean when I say to block your items. It just, um, it brings out the stitches and it helps you, uh, basically to form the hat into whatever you want. And that, that can get rid of this little seam that you see happens, um, because this is actually where we start and stop, uh, as we're going around. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Um, you know, put your comments at the end. And if there's something you don't like, uh, all I ask is that you be nice about it. You can say anything. It's all about how you say it. And if you make this hat, um, you know, come join us on our Facebook page and show us a picture. I love pictures.